Okay, now I am showing you some of the optional things we can do once we have our black line art jumble. One thing is to add color by using effects. So I'm doing that with a duplicate. I use Command J to get a duplicate. I turn off the original and I double click on the layer and I can use things like gradient overlay. And just to show you how powerful that is, because we'll be using the gradient tool off and on for different things. I can take these defaults, but if I actually click on the gradient, I can customize these with any kind of colors I want, with any kind of spacing and expansion I want. I can make them lower opacities. I can make them warmer or cooler. I can customize the angle of them, right? So if I say OK, and then I can adjust the angle, I can even reverse it. And I can play with what's called the scale of it, which stretches it out or not. And then I can play with the opacity of just the gradient. So it's going to make it look like it's turning to black because that's, this is a, a layer effect on top of a black shape. Right? But if I turn on color overlay, and a color overlay is on normal mode at 100%, that will just overlap all those gradients. But what if I take the opacity down? Well, then it will show through a little bit through that blue. But I can also play with blending modes. Remember, multiply, that will make everything darker that comes through. Or we can use another blending mode, which is very common in digital art, and I think very nice, called dissolve. And what dissolve does is as you take the opacity down, it bitmaps the image into discrete pixels, which gives you what looks like almost a coloring, not a coloring, a uh, construction paper kind of texture of the color. So now you see that the blue is kind of this fragmented, dissolved pixel on top of the gradient, which is on top of the black. Now, in order to get some of the things we saw in these, this kind of coloring, this is just a gradient, right? So we understand how to do that. But here we see some more involved kind of coloring, like it's cut out of wrapping paper or cut out of colored fabric. And that's when you would composite in your coloring. So let's see, I did Johnny Quest. So let's do uh, Wacky Races, the other Hanna-Barbera throwback kind of cartoon. And I'm now going to look for images that are large but full color. Oh, this is pretty cool, like an old board game. I want something kind of vintage. And I might even take one or two. And here we have just a really large cache sheet. So again, I right click, I open link in new tab. Then I right click and I open image in new tab to see the quality of the image. It's not huge, but it will work. It will get softened out a little bit. I'm going to drag it to the desktop. Next one, open image in new tab. It's again, not huge, huge, but big enough to work. Because this is what in digital design is called a texture overlay. We're not creating our image with it. We are just kind of shading and doing variations on our image with it. So I'm going to turn this one off, turn my black one back on, and I'm going to put these layers Oh, interesting. Never seen that come from online. That came as an AVIF file. Uh, it thinks it's a vector file, which it can't be, but it's, some, it's something that Illustrator can read. It's a raster file that Illustrator can read, but other things can't read, which I haven't seen before. But this is what I can do. This is why we learn screen graph. <laughs> I can make it as big as I want on the screen, even though that will soften a little bit, and then just do a pretty pretty large screen grab of it. Command Shift 4, because I want this as wrapping paper. Then shrink this down. 
And then I want that screen grab will appear as screen grabs are always PNG files. And so now I can use it. Because file formats matter. Okay, now I'm just going to drag these on. And it will go on top of my last layer. And then you guys know how to use transform. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to stretch this like it's cookie dough to cover up my image. And then hit return. Even though that's going to upsample it and soften it. Okay, I'll, let me do it with just one first. Right now, this is a smart object, but I can leave it as a smart object. What I'm going to do is use my magic wand. I'll turn off the background so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to use my magic wand, same settings, 32 tolerance, contiguous turned off. Click on the empty space. The one thing that Photoshop is really excellent at selecting is empty space. Right? It knows when there aren't pixels there. So when I click that, it'll give me a perfect copy of all of the empty space. That's more reliable than clicking on the black. So when I click on the empty space, now I want to switch it so it's selecting everything that's not empty. To do that, I go to select and inverse. And now it swaps the selection. If I turn that layer off, you'll see that the selection is still there. Now I'm going to click on and select my colored layer. And now I have a cookie cutter, basically, selection. And in order to select that and cut it out from that background smart object, I'm not going to hit delete. That wouldn't work because it's a smart object anyway. I'm going to say duplicate. I'm going to say command J. What command J will do is put onto a new layer on top of the smart object, that selection copied onto a new layer. Then I can turn on the black behind it. I can turn on the white behind that. And you can see that now this is cut out of that material. If I take the opacity down, I can only let some of it through. And if I change that layer blending mode to dissolve, then it can have a little bit of texture as it does that. So that's one type of coloring. Let me throw this one on there too. Stretch it, hold down shift, I can warp it. I don't need to worry about it softening because it's just a texture overlay. If I think Scooby-Doo is a little too prominent in there, I can always move it off of that. Right, and then I'm gonna click on the layer. I can use the black one just so it's like what I did before. Use the magic wand, select on the empty space, go to select, say to inverse, and then go to the layer with my smart object for my new color and then hit command J and then turn off that smart object. Right, so now that's at full opacity, but I can tone that down and I can set that at dissolve. And then I can turn on the one underneath it and then layer that one on top of it. Right, and then I can add in all the gradient and color effects as well and then take the opacity down on that just so I get something that's my own right and not individually recognizable okay beyond that I can even go further and I can do things like add a drop shadow underneath it So it looks like it's actually cut out and somewhat floating. So you can see that shadow around it. It's very subtle because of the... Let's see how we can sharpen this up. Yeah, it's from the glowing... but I can do that on any one of them. So there's just lots of aspects you can do. And then if I wanted to save this as a free floating thing, I can say file, save as a copy. Now this time I'm gonna add to my image name and I'm gonna put color in there and then save it as a PNG. Otherwise it will overwrite my, my previous copy PNG. 
And now I have it here. That's good for going online. And so if you want to update and post a color version, you can. All right. I have a lot of tabs open. Where is it? And you all have the ability to edit your own posts, which means you can add to it. So here's mine. So I'm going to click on that, edit, and add my color version underneath. Upload image, grab the PNG or the JPEG, and submit. Notice the PNG won't give you that quality screen slider. PNGs are always bigger than JPEGs, but they're still small enough to work online. And they do not support layers, but they do support transparency. So that's why we use PNG sometimes. And again, what is transparency? Well, if I open up this PNG in preview, it will show what it looks like on a gray background. If I save it as a JPEG, that would be a white background. That is it.